we are going to particularly care about those relations on a set that have all three properties, that they are reflexive, they are symmetric, and they are transitive. This is going to be a very important consideration for us. And when we have all three properties, we're going to call it an equivalence relation. I'm going to give two examples of equivalent relations that you've seen before. The first is actually just normal old equality of numbers. For example, if I just have integers, I want to see whether or not they satisfy these properties. Well, something like 3 is always equal to 3. So that equality, which is a way, if you will, of relating numbers on the left with numbers on the right, equality is a relation on numbers. And it's a reflexive one because 3 is always equal to 3. And then it's also symmetric in a really trivial way. If you're like 3 is equal to 3 and I reorder them, then 3 is equal to 3 the other way around. It's clearly symmetric. And it's also transitive. 3 is equal to 3. And 3 is equal to 3. Then the original 3 is equal to the third 3. So equality is our notion of an equivalence relation. And indeed, this isn't by coincidence. An equivalence relation is really trying to capture the essence of what equality should be, but in a slightly more generalized concept. So this is going to become apparent in the second example of an equivalence relation that you've already seen before, you just didn't know to call it an equivalence relation. And this is equality of modular arithmetic. The second example I want you to consider is modular arithmetic. Suppose I have some expression like, how about 10 mod 3? And we know that 10 mod 3 is going to be the value of 1. This is the remainder if you take 10 divided by 3, or in other words, you can say 10 is equal to 3 copies of 3 plus 1. So, so we know that this is just going to be equal to the value of 1. Doing the reflexive point is pretty trivial here. We're just going to be saying that this is exactly the same thing as 10 modulo 3, which is also equal to 1. Of course it is. So indeed it's reflective. The, the x is related to the x. So, so a quality in modular arithmetic obeys the reflexivity property. Well, that's a little bit less interesting. Now let's go and look at the symmetric property. If I look at 10 modulo 3, well, I can also say, I know this number is 1, but there's other numbers that are equal to 1 as well. How about 7 modulo 3? Indeed, 7 is twice 3 plus 1. So it has the remainder of 1 either way. So, so all of these turn out to be equal to these values just of 1. But what we're saying is that in this case, we've got x is related to y. But, but notice that the x and the y, they really look different now, right? In modular arithmetic, this equality here is this equality between these weird symbols. And, and we know that they're just equal to these numbers, but, but they really are represented symbolically very differently. But then if I flip this around and try to write 7 mod 3, well, that is also equal to 10 mod 3. Indeed, these are both just equal to 1, and 1 is equal. So we have this symmetric property for modular arithmetic. If you have two mod things that are equal and you flip their order around, they're still going to be equal. And then for transitivity, I'm not going to write the entire thing down, but I'll note that if I choose yet another one, how about, uh, what do I want to go to? 13 modulo 3, which is just yet one more example of something which is equal to 1 that has remainder 1. 13 is going to be 4 times 3 plus a remainder of 1. Well, if you have that 10 mod 3 equals 7 mod 3, and you have that 7 mod 3 equals 13 mod 3, which you have both of those, then the 10 mod 3 equals the 13 mod 3 as well. And so you can get transitivity for your modular arithmetic. Now, I haven't really formally proven it. I just did a, a quick example with some numbers. But I think it's enough to illustrate the idea that Normal old equality of numbers and this modular arithmetic are two examples of equivalence relations.